From survival games to battle box, minigames have long been a part of the Minecraft community. Legendary games like Skywars, Bedwars, and even classics like survival games have defined the minigame landscape. Servers like Hypixel have found incredible success and grown beyond just simple video game servers and into full-scale businesses. These companies employ full-time developers, designers, and artists to craft their minigames. But behind all of this, how does one actually go about designing and creating a minigame? How do they go from ideas in a designer's head to actual playable experiences? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Hello everybody, welcome back to the devlog. In this one we're going to be talking about how I have created my very first minigame for the server called Void Rush. But before we start that, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed. We've just hit 3,000 subscribers, which honestly is incredible to me. Thank you all so much for the support. It's been incredible to hear all of your feedback and your comments and your amazing ideas for the server. In other news, I now have a Discord server, so if you want to talk about plugin development or YouTube or really anything, invite link is in the description if that sounds interesting. All right, let's get into it. So how do you actually create a mini game? Now, I've had some experience with this before. I've created a couple Minecraft tournaments, I guess, similar to MCC and other projects like that, where I've created custom minigames and had players compete. But I've never created something that's supposed to be standalone. So the original idea for this comes a lot from one of those one of the games I had in one of these tournaments that was also called Void Rush. It's very similar to Bed Wars in a lot of ways, but essentially you have a generator in the middle of the map. And again, like Bed Wars or Sky Wars, it takes place on an island, so players have to bridge between the different areas. And again, just think of a Bed Wars map, very similar to that. You know how you have the emerald generators in the middle. Uh, in this one, you have a pile of void ore. And the objective of the game is to to be the last team to survive and how you do that is by collecting void ore so everything in the game costs void ore there's upgrades you can buy for your team which i'll talk about more later there are void powers which you can purchase for your team and you can upgrade those that's kind of a another system i'll talk about later because it's pretty interesting functions a bit like a roguelike game where you have kind of different builds you could create every time how this all works is with void ore so you collect void ore from the center and teams can steal void ore from each other by going to another team's island and if you die with void ore on you it drops and other players can pick it up now I'll, again i'll talk about that a bit more later because it actually turns into something called infuse void ore which can be used in a couple different ways but essentially the goal of the game is to get void ore now respawning also costs void ore so every time you die you your team loses void ore so there's this interesting dynamic where the void ore is not just a way for your team to stay alive it's like a health bar you could say but it's also a currency so you have to make the trade-off between getting upgrades and becoming more powerful and staying alive keeping your health pool high and this is really what i wanted the core mechanic of the game to be basically deciding having that trade-off between being more powerful as a team or having more health as a team because you need both to be able to survive you don't want to go too low in your health because then you'll be easy to take out whereas you also don't want to have no equipment or powers or anything because you'll be behind everyone else so another system that's really interesting is the power system now this system really takes a lot of inspiration from roguelike games like uh, hades for example as the system where every run you have optional powers that you can pick up and basically you, you have a different build for your character every time you run through so i took a lot of inspiration from systems like that and essentially you have a whole big pool of void powers and every game you have a random selection of those powers. Now you can reroll them by paying void ore. It allows you to kind of create different builds. So you can create really interesting synergies with that. Now there's actually another level to the system called infused void powers and infused void powers are essentially stronger powers. So I think right now uh, every team can have up to five void powers. So the, the basic powers and those are their little things like getting a bit of extra speed when you take fall damage, or maybe having your arrows go a bit further when you shoot them, or maybe having a bit of like a, a damage over time effect occasionally if you attack. Generally pretty small things. Definitely noticeable, but small things. The infused void powers are supposed to be much more powerful, so there'll be things like uh, exploding on death, or getting a second chance when you die. Like if you fall in the void, there's one, for example, if you fall in the void, it'll deal a bunch of damage to you and actually boost you out of the void so you won't die. And that can be paired with other powers that maybe allows you to slow down your fall while you're you're aiming a bow. So you, there's interesting synergies there as well. These infused void powers are kind of like an upgraded form of multiple powers, of multiple void powers mashed together. So basically, it'll, it takes lower level powers and stitches them together into more powerful abilities 
Now, how you get these powers depends on which one it is. So for the basic void powers, you can get them with just void ore. They'll cost an amount of void ore. Basically, you click on the shop and then you'll get two options. Now, none of these have textures yet because I haven't done any kind of um, art with this yet. It's all just code. So everything looks very primitive. But basically, yeah, you have these two powers and you can choose to reroll them, but that will cost void ore. So if you really don't like your options, you can always get new ones. But usually it's better to, to take a pick and then you can choose one and that just costs void ore. Nothing too fancy. It's just pretty much basic power upgrade. Now with the infused void power, it's a little bit different. So you actually need infused void ore. So the way to get infused void ore is to kill somebody who has void ore on them. So if a player gets a bunch of void ore, either from stealing it or from mining it from the center, and you kill them, that void ore will drop as infused void ore. Now, that infused void ore is worth two regular void ore. So if you choose to put that towards your team's regular void ore, which you can do, it'll count for two. So there's that interesting dynamic of do I want to use this to get myself an infused void power to get our team more powerful, or do I want to give our team more health and, and get more void ore? And again, that's coming back to that dynamic of the choice between the two things and trying to incorporate a bit of dual purpose design as well. Yeah, so if you don't choose to use that fused void ore for team health, then you can instead use it for buying infused void powers. Now that's kind of the whole system with that. I uh, might change it around a little bit. I have to, like, I really don't know how balanced it is. I might change the values. I might make it so that void or uh, infused void or gives you more or it's there's less power slots or stuff like that. And I'm going to keep trying adding new powers. I have, I think I have about 10 or 11 normal void powers, uh, maybe five or six infused void powers, but that's something that can really be updated and added later on in the future. How you win is you're the last team alive and a team is eliminated if they run completely out of void or either by dying enough times because remember respawning costs void or or if no team is being eliminated and it's just going on and on and on the game only lasts for 12 minutes so after 12 minutes there will be a death match and essentially what that means is just every second a certain amount of void or will be taken away from all the teams and the last team with any void or remaining the last team to be eliminated will be the winners so this is kind of just a nice way to bring the game to an end now i really wanted to keep the games fairly short because most players usually don't like long games especially if their team has been eliminated and they just have to sit and watch either their teammates or something else happen or other teams happen now usually that's not a problem because they can just queue into a new game but i wanted to make sure that nobody is in the game doing nothing i wanted to keep the game fast paced keep everyone playing keep it all going with that said that's basically it this game was really interesting to design it takes a lot of inspiration from current games on the market such as you know bed wars really the main inspiration behind the kind of minecraft side of it now a lot of the ideas in this came from this amazing video by mark brown on dual purpose design you probably heard me mention that through the video i would absolutely recommend watching it and all the other videos on his channel is fantastic for game design really an amazing way to learn and uh, extremely high quality videos highly recommend go watch that i'm not sure if the game is in a playable state yet but it's definitely at a state where it needs to start testing so i think that i want to do a play test soon i'm not sure when it would happen though but all of that would be sh would be shared on the discord so if you are interested in play testing the game definitely go and join the discord because i'll put all the information there and if i do run a play test i'll probably announce it with a youtube community post as well but majority of it will happen on the discord and i'll be giving updates and kind of instructions on the discord because <laughs> i guarantee it will not go smoothly stuff will break and i'll i'll do my best to communicate that with the playtesters that's pretty much it for this video thank you very much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next video mm -hmm.